Hello, everyone. My name is Agustin Petroni. I'm data coordinator at Environment for Development. As you know, data created by EFT funded projects is stored in a public repository for long term preservation and reuse. The aim of this video is to help PIs, uh, researchers, students, and data managers to upload, upload their data to a repository. The repository we use at EFD is the Swedish National Data Service, SND. The SND system is called Doris. This is a tutorial with a very practical approach. You could literally play this video while you upload your data step by step. So, as a brief introduction, uh, research data follows a cycle with many stages. And today we will focus on preservation. To preserve data for present and future generations, we need to describe it the best we can. Data that describes other data is called metadata. So, in essence, what we do is to preserve data. Um, describing it with metadata, since without metadata, data is not understandable by other humans or by machines, most likely. Uh, so like a big table with numbers means nothing if you don't know what's inside each column or row. Before moving on, prepare the following materials, or at least the most important file, which is the data set. Uh, regarding the data set, most probably your data, the data set is a survey and it has stata format. So besides the stata file, save uh, the file in X, LS, X, or ODT formats, and, and one of those. Uh, the codebook. The codebook is a dictionary, let's say, where variables are defined and described. Uh, this should be also XML. Uh, it could be XLSX or DOCX. Uh, if you don't know how to make a codebook, there's a line here written in Stata language uh, with the ASDOC function. You can open your data and run this line of code, and uh, ASDOC will create a uh, a file called my file, then you can change the name. That is the codebook. There are other ways in R and other languages. Just write to me and I will uh, help you. And finally, the questionnaire that you use for the study or your survey. Uh, please uh, save this one in XML as well, like docx is fine. So let's uh, start by creating an account on the SND website. For that, we'll need an org ID uh, number. Org ID is open research and contributor ID. It's a unique uh, digital identifier for individual researchers and contributors. And if you want to create it now, uh, you can just click on the ORCID logo in this video. If you already have one, uh, let's move on and uh, register in the SND website. This is the SND website. Before we log in, let me show you a few things here. You can find uh, data from other studies, including environment for development data. Here you will see the catalog with all the data collections from. EFT. So let's go back to SND. Another interesting thing about this website is that you can have in managed data a lot of information on how to uh, yeah, curate and manage data. So let's go directly to our login. There, there are two ways here. One is if you have a, an account in a Swedish uh, university, most of you won't have. So we go through ORC ID, ORCID. Uh, well, this computer remembers my ORCID account. So sign in here and I should be in. Excellent, all right. Now I'm inside. Uh, I will press the English version. Yeah, I was uh, translating automatically, but I just turned it to English. Okay, there we are. Let's go to Doris. It's our system to curate data, to manage data. All right, so Doris has um, a list of data descriptions. This is my account. Uh, this is on my, my data coordinator account. It's another account. Uh, it's empty, basically. It has two toy examples here. So you, when you first open an account on the SND website, you won't see anything here. This will be completely uh, empty. But uh, as long as you create what we call data descriptions, which are the uh, the set of metadata that accompanies uh, data files from a study, you will see them here on a list. All right, let's create a new data description for your study. So we will start by. Uh, giving some initial basic information, like the title. Two important things here. You will see in some fields a red dot or asterisk. This is mandatory information. This, this doesn't mean that you cannot leave it empty uh, provisory and then fill it another day, uh, which, which means that you can move on and, uh, and finish your, let's say, all the pages. And you can come back tomorrow and fill everything. Uh, but for the final submission, you will need every mandatory field uh, with information. Another comment before starting is that sometimes you will see this, like title in Swedish, title in English. Sometimes you will see both languages. In your case, since most of you are not in Sweden, you can fill both in English. Okay, so let's fill this with title of my study. All right, so in data accessibility level, we will uh, check the access 
to data through SND. Level of accessibility. Access to data is data is restricted. This is because if you press, if you check here, the data will be accessible through a, a click so very easily. And we, we want people to ask for the data to have some control. Uh, in this first initial, very initial information, we see a section that is very relevant, which is personal data. Data in this study includes personal data. This uh, section is very important uh, because it, uh, it has uh, legal implications. First, we need to define what is personal data. So personal data is personal. If we can identify an individual, a living a person, uh, using that same data, all right? So identification can occur directly uh, with names or social security numbers or indirectly combining uh, other sorts of uh, information, other variables, like let's say occupation, age, and district. So you might be able to identify a person through this combination. And there's a third say, option that is pseudonymized data. Uh, here data does not contain identifiers, but uh, let's say that you replace names with uh, numerical IDs, but let's say that you store that list, original list with names in your, in your computer at your university, then there is a way to reconstruct that information and then the data is personal, okay. So um, we will cover this topic in more detail in another video, but the general criteria should be the following. Uh, try to remove personal data that is not relevant for the study. Let's say, for example, replace names with numerical IDs. Replace exact GPS coordinates of households, uh, well, or add some random noise of a few, a few hundred meters to avoid uh, individual identification, all right? So if it's not relevant for the study, it's personal, try to remove it. Then keep as much information as possible that is relevant for your study. Um, of course, this can, this can be summarized as the, da the data should be as open as possible and as close and necessary. Okay, so if there is personal information, that, that's okay, that's not necessarily bad. After, if after taking these actions that I'm recommending, uh, your data still contains personal information, uh, that's not a problem as I said, but you should declare it with a yes here. Uh, you can change this afterward, so no problem. You can just press yes and continue, and then we can discuss this after you submit the data. Um, data contain other protected information. Uh, if uh, your data is protected by other local or international laws, for example, biological species uh, protection laws or other type of, uh, of law uh, that's specific to your data, that covers your data, then you should check this one. I will just uh, check the no box. It's most of the uh, cases, this is, this is not, uh, it's in most of the cases, uh, information is not protected by other laws. So you should check this with your own data. Um, the research principle, it's uh, environment for development initiative. And regarding the research area profile, select social sciences. And this is because uh, in the social science uh, option, it's adapted for uh, surveys. It's, uh, it's adapted for, uh, it's based on a, on, a, on a profile, on a standard developed by Chesta. So we'll continue. All right, so now we can see our study with the title of your study and seven sections, all right? After filling one of these sections at the end, you will have save and continue button and you will go to the next section, general description, topics and keywords, et cetera, et cetera. And you can go directly to those sections, just pressing or clicking on top of the titles here in the sections, the menu. You have a save button. Uh, you can press this anytime and you will save the last version of this data description. You can have a click here now. You can preview the data to see how it will look in the SND website. Uh, let's check it now. Well, this is, I, I, we just wrote uh, down a title, so there's nothing interesting here. But um, now you know how it looks and submit. We won't press this one until the very end. So let's start with the section one. Accessibility, responsibility, and roles. Uh, you will see that there's information that you already filled in the previous section. That was the initial information. Okay. And there's a new box here. Let's check if data shall be made available for close review at a scientific journal. Uh, you should check this box only if you uh, submitted your data and it's under review in a peer reviewed scientific journal and they request access to the data. Otherwise, don't do this. Don't click, don't check this box because. Um, uh, checking this box, what you will create is a link. It's basically a link that, uh, for, for reviewers, but uh, yeah, only use it in that situation. Um, regarding the research area profile, we already selected social science. The research principle, it's environment for development initiative again. This one is a red, this, this is not red, but 
please uh, uh, try to fill all the information you can. Uh, so this is very useful, especially for me. If you if you write down your um, your study number defined by given by EFT, let's say MS I don't know, 584, whatever. But this number that is assigned to your study, please write it down here. That will be very useful, especially for me. Um, so the, resp the responsible department uh, and the unit, it's uh, University of Gothenburg. So, um, yeah. And then this department is School of. Oh, sorry. I think it's correct. Put it down here again, both times in English. Okay, just one research principle is fine. Then principal investigator. Let's say that you are the data manager or a researcher that you're not the PI. Then maybe your name will be here, but you should uh, delete this info and uh, write down the name of the PI. So as a general comment, uh, this cross is to eliminate an entry. This is a menu. So you, where you can see details. In fact, I can edit here. And this, it's, uh, this is for moving this. Uh, when you have many, let's say, PIs, you can move it, move it move, change the order. Uh, in this case, there's only one PI. There will be only one PI in every, in every project. So write down, I don't know. Let's say that the PI is called uh, Susan. Yes, yeah, so the PI works at the University of Gothenburg or any other university. Please fill the department and the email of uh, the PI's email. All right, so we have the PI information. Um, contributors are, I'm sorry, uh, so contact for data. Um, here, this one is very important. It's uh, the person that you should, that let's say that the researchers, that the researcher that enters this data description in 30 years or in five years should have some information about who knows what, what this data contains. So in contact for, for data, you can add like uh, the PI or it's better if you add like a, uh, another researcher that knows very well the data. Uh, you can add more than one contact person for data. Let's say you can add here in the first one, a researcher involved in the data collection or an, yeah, another person uh, in that process. And the second one can be the data manager in, in that center, let's say in Central America. So this should be, uh, all the information about this data manager. You, you can eventually add a third person here. That could be me, uh, Agustin Petroni, um, since I'm the data coordinator. All right. Um, contributors are, are, person, are, are persons, yeah, that uh, they are not authors of the data, but they, let's say they contributed with somehow. So you can add eventually some contributor. This section, we already filled it. And since we said, Yes, it contains personal information. Here it mentions uh, what is personal information very briefly and mentions the GDPR, which is very important. Um, so since, you, since we checked yes, we should define what type of personal data it is. Um, we, can, we can say direct identifiers, indirect identifiers. Uh, we should give the names of the variables that could be used to identify people, like addresses or, well, let's say, uh, ages and uh, uh, gender and uh, district occupation, all right, both in English. Um, code key exists. This is uh, if, if ID numbers, uh, if the data contains ID numbers that can be linked to uh, social security numbers. Uh, so if that's the case, check yes, otherwise no. Sensitive personal data, it's uh, sensitive, it's data that, it's, um, that health data is sensitive or data with religious uh, uh, information is sensitive. So if you have, uh, like uh, private uh, health records, check yes. Otherwise, most probably will be no. Other protected information, we already answered this one. No. All right. You can ignore this. And the funding is very important. We will add the funding uh, funding agency, which is SIDA. Uh, SIDA, which is um, the Swedish All right. All right. Our number, well, eventually you can add uh, the same MS 500 and whatever, but this is not so relevant. Um, you can add, uh, well, you should add 
a second one that it's environment. So this, both these names, same idea here, should be included. Okay, funding complete. And the last one is ethical review. Uh, some of the projects they require uh, an ethical uh, review, or uh, let's say that it, it, they should be examined by an ethical uh, board. And in, in the case that it has one, you should check yes and give a reference number. All ethical reviews, they give a reference, some sort of reference number, uh, just write it down here. And here, if, uh, if the review was uh, Swedish or mm -hmm. other, so either ethical review authority or another review board. So, all right, we will save and continue to the next one. Section number two, general description. We go again, to the title. Uh, enter an alternative title for your data description. This can be a short title. Usually when you publish uh, in journals, sometimes they ask you like, for a shorter title, you can add this one, a shorter version if you have it. Description, uh, enter a short abstract of the data material. This can be the abstract of, the, of your study. In case you, you already published this or you're in the process of publishing uh, a paper, then you can add the abstract of, the, of your study here. You might want to modify it a bit to, um, uh, to describe a bit more the data, but uh, it's important to, for, for, for other researchers to understand what's the study about. So both cases in English or yeah. Should be at least 200. Okay, well, <laughs> sorry for this. Uh, yeah, I think it's uh, 200. This is way more than 200. So in case, uh, your study has uh, all your data has a your your URL associated with the data. You can add it here. Otherwise, yeah. Just remove it. Identifiers. This is in case uh, there's a DOI, like um, another data description related to this one, another paper or project. So there's you can add one or not. Uh, here we can select many languages in case the data contains more than one. Basically, you, you type uh, like, we'll show you, yeah, so it is. Same here, I will remove these two. The time method, you, you have to specify if it's a longitudinal data, I'd say a panel data. Uh, so it might have, for some reason, your study might include both cross-sectional and longitudinal data, and you add both, but let's say it's a panel data. Uh, normally the unit of analysis in the in the surveys conducted uh, by researchers at EFT, it's uh, household, but you might want to include others uh, depending on the, on, the, on the study, like a family or individual. Yeah, you can add as many as it corresponds. Population, uh, describe the group of individuals, objects, or events that are the object of research. So usually these uh, surveys uh, conducted at EFD, they are about uh, farmers, workers, or citizens of uh, some regions. So you should describe that. Uh, something to see procedure, you should uh, select uh, if it's probability, if it's, I would say, one of these, simply random, stratified, cluster, or non probability. Let's say that it's, um, it's a combination, or yeah, you're combining probability and non probability for some reason. Um, so select those that are relevant. This, you will know if you're the data manager and you're not sure about this, uh, just ask the PI. But yeah, I, I, reading the, the, the methodology of the, of the project or the research paper, if, if it has been published, you should be able to, to fill these fields. Description of sampling, again, uh, this is, uh, well, I added this um, uh, sentence, but you should describe a bit more about the procedure. How are the stages? I don't know, all the criteria that you use, as much as you want, uh, describing your sampling method. You can always, uh, you can also leave it uh, empty because it's not mandatory, but yeah, if you if you give some information to other researchers, that will be really helpful. Is there any scientific collection or biobank related to your data? Is your data connected to a, a biobank? Most probably not. Uh, URL related to your data, you can add here uh, this kind of uh, identifiers. Let's say that there's no URL, we eliminate it. And this last section is, is it's not mandatory, but it's very relevant. Uh, this is uh, basically if your study is related to other research study already in the data catalog, you, you write it down here, the title of the other study, most probably not, uh, but uh, yeah, you can do that. But this one, please uh, try to fill it down. It's part of data collection at 
S and D, and you can write down environment for development and select it. Uh, then this data will be part of the EFT data collection. All right, so we save and continue to the next section. Section number three, topics and keywords. Um, research area is not mandatory, but it's very important. Well, at least the second one, the first one it is. Um, take your time, open the menu and take your time to select the areas that best describe your study. Usually we are not in natural science or physical science. We are most, most probably in social sciences. All right, at the bottom is, um, yeah, social sciences. Yeah, so economics and business, economics. Most probably economics plus uh, probably others, uh, let's say gender studies. So again, take your time and look for the, the fields that best describe your study. This is very important uh, to uh, give visibility and to um, define with precision those uh, labels that will give visibility to your data description. Uh, all right, so let's say that we have these two. Um, do the same in Chesta. I recommend that because it will give you even more precision. Uh, let's say that you are studying economic systems and development, uh, land use and planning, and um, let me see if there's something, natural environment, environment and conservation, and so on. So keywords, keywords are very important for the same reason, to make your site or your data findable. Uh, you can go for a simple search here, like an environment. Well, whatever you write, there's, there's going to be this uh, menu, press it. Uh, and within environment, it will show you different options. You can uh, select a human environment or natural environment. It was added, uh, let's say, social policy, environment, environment policy, added. All right, so this is one way to add fields. These are down here are translated to Swedish, but yeah, you can ignore this part for now. So with this uh, method, you can select as many keywords as you want. Let's say three, four should be more than enough. But if you don't find those keywords, the keywords that uh, define your study here, you can create custom keywords down here, create them in, in English in both, both fields. Uh, let's say, I don't know, for some reason. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right, once you write down the keywords, uh, you're done with this section. Let's save and continue to the next section. Section four, geographic coverage. In this section, this is one. Uh, this is a short one. You will just uh, yeah describe where is, it, is this data from. Select which geographic areas, country, city, uh, oceans, the data concern. Let's say, Ethiopia. Yeah, so you can select as many regions, countries, uh, Costa, yeah, there you go. The geographic de description is a bit more uh, like longer than just mentioning a, uh, a country. Since this information will be, uh, this will research data catalog, but to be specific, um, the southern region of this province or X, Y, and Z regions of that province, uh, yeah. Yeah, most cases in English. This is not mandatory, but you can add uh, the highest and the lowest geographical unit, like country and municipality, or uh, yeah, region, and yeah, this town district or electoral area. This is again not mandatory. You can even just. Uh, Select the lowest, and uh, that would, should be enough. And finally, uh, you can let's say that your, your study was performed in Addis. I'm going to try to find Addis here. Where is Addis? It is. Let's say that you your study had been conducted around, uh, let's say, this section. You have many ways to mark this on a map, and this will be shown in the catalog, uh, like lines, squares. I like polygons, let's say. It's very fun to make polygons here. Say that this is all the area covered by your data. So when you select the first one again, you would finish. And that's your polygon. You can eventually uh, erase this polygon and start again. 
yeah, so this is very fun. You can also upload uh, localization, geolocalization files. Uh, yeah, both are fine. So save and continue. Section number five, data collection and access. In this, in this section, we will describe the data in more detail, such as data format, data structure, and mode of data collection. Uh, it's important uh, to know that in this section, you can upload many data sets in case your study uh, has more than one data set. Let me show you this. All right, so this is the entire section, and this is one data set. You can add one more here. Uh, okay. Um, let's delete this one for now. We will use only one data set. At uh, SND, you just prefer, when possible, a single file rather than uh, data sets that are divided in, in many data files. Uh, for instance, a survey that has been conducted in many different cities or districts uh, should be submitted as one data file, uh, shouldn't be submitted as, as, as one data file per city. So it should be one, one data file and you should add a district as a variable, okay? So in surveys, try to have one data set if possible. So we'll work with one data set here. Again, so can I love my study. Version one. So here in this field, you can select data files. You will press here and open uh, your computer uh, directories and select for your data files. Uh, as I told you in the very beginning, you should uh, upload one more than one format. Let's say that you have a, a Stata file. If that's the case, upload the Stata file plus the XML version. Let's say that you uh, you you save your Stata file in XLSX. Uh, format and then you upload uh, that one as well. This is because let's say in 10 years or 15 years, maybe it's not possible to open the Stata file. But the XML, since, since it's open, it's gonna be always, well, literally always possible to open. Okay, so you select the data files here. It's gonna be uh, probably two uh, formats of the same data file as, as we discussed. And then you add a title here. Uh, usually you'll have the same title of your study. So the data will have the same title of your study. Uh, that won't be the case if you have more than one data set. Then you, you will add uh, data set one, data set one. This is Swedish English. Uh, and then with the next, well, we will, we will, you will include a title that is more descriptive that, and data set one, of course. Let's say, rule um, at attendance in X area, whatever. So normally you will leave the, the study title. Um, another identifier related to the data set. Uh, and usually you won't need an, oh, another identifier. Uh, it's asking again, who's the PI? Uh, this is because maybe in very big studies, you might have different PIs in charge of different data sets. That won't be the case at EFD. Most of the projects they have, like all of the projects, that I, as far as I remember, or almost all of them, they have one PI and other collaborators. Uh, and you have one, you have, you have one PI, but you, even if you have many data sets, the, the PI will do the same. Um, you can add uh, an organization here, usually not necessary because you have the, the info about the, the PI in the, in the previous sections. And this is a description of the data set. So this is like the abstract that you already fill. As I told you, when you were describing the study, uh, you can paste the abstract of the project or if you already publish a paper or if you are preparing a manuscript and you have an abstract, you can use that. But since this is the description of the data set, uh, this is a kind of abstract of the data, okay? A description. So you describe this particular data. If you are uploading different data files, that that could happen. Uh, for every data file, you would have a different description. This is very important to be specific. Uh, every data file with a different description. Uh, data format or structure usually is uh, num numeric and text. EFP. You can have usually audio or video. Um, keywords are. Uh, for, for the specific data set. You can select two or three that is this we're taking from the study. Uh, information about the data, um, about how the data have been collected or generated. Uh, for example, mode of data collection. Uh, usually at EFD we have interviews, face-to-face -face or telephone, but there are other possibilities like self-administered questionnaire, uh, like via the internet or I don't know, in focus group. So, and those that are relevant for your study, Let's say face-to-face, -face, telephone interview. You have one option here. Okay, yeah, because it's only for one data set. Um, you should describe the mode of the uh, the mode of collection for this particular data set again. 
in a, in a few lines uh, that uh, data were collected using method like it's in red in uh, uh, like methods of mode of collection or we can add like uh in that there was uh, tablets it's uh, yeah. a bit more about the specific uh modes of data collection um time period for this particular data set again remember that we are describing one data set if we have only one data set in the whole study then we will use the same dates uh instruments that have been used for the data collection the computer laptops whatever um, yeah, questionnaire, technical instruments, programming scripts. Yeah. Uh, in case there was a, an organization higher for data collection, you can look, uh, you can search it here. And the data source type. Um, let's say that uh, the source is, uh, yeah, um, personal interaction. Population group. Yeah, you can select many here. Let's say that. Let's say event interactions and population group. Uh, so please ask the PI if you are the data manager or a researcher and you have you're not clear with this menu. Just show this menu to the PI because I'm just inventing that uh, creating a. But a, every study would have a different um, uh, modes of uh, a data source type. You know. Um, sample size. This is the well, n equal to nine, or 900, whatever. Non respondents, let's say that 34, they didn't respond. If you want to add the cost, you can add this uh, number of responses for the data set. Uh, that, these are optional fields, but you can add weighting if you use weighting. Uh, if you use variables uh, for, to weight data, numbers, number of variables, you should know this one. Let's say we have 120 variables, uh, individual, individuals, say that we have 100. You can add the participation participation rate in, in percentage. Let's say ninety four. If you want to describe this in text, you can do it. And uh, again, time period investigated. Uh, license and copyright for this particular data set. Uh, you can leave this one empty, and S and D will take care of this. Uh, yeah, license is usually if you have a market or other type of license. You can you can ask me or do some research about this, uh, or ask the PI. Uh, yeah, otherwise just leave it empty, and let's go to the next section. Section number six, publications. Uh, first, publications of any kind which are based on, described, or any other way related to your data, to the data. Um, so let's say that uh, uh, you publish uh, your study, then you will add your publication, publication here. Uh, or if for some reason your data is linked to another paper or publication, just add it here. Okay, all these fields uh, should be filled with your with, with with the paper you publish or with the previous papers related to your data. Again. Uh, uh, you, you can uh, search for publications here, uh, just type, uh, yeah, these are the, the journals, uh, all right, title of your publication, reference, all right, okay, author title, etc., etc. year, identifier, like DOI, and then you write, in case there are papers, let's uh, eliminate this one, because I will assume that there's no publications, and these are links to publication list. Uh, in case you have a list of publications related to your data, you can add them here with URLs. We'll cancel them and we will save and continue. In section number seven, the last one, documentation files. In this section, you will upload important documentation needed for other researchers to understand or use your data. Okay, so the two fundamental documents, as I said at the very beginning, are besides, besides the data file that you already uploaded in a previous section called data collection and access, are the codebook and uh, the questionnaire uh, or questionnaires used in the survey. You can also add publications in PDF files. Uh, you can add uh, text files describing the study or the data or with the whole project application or, or yeah, any information that complements the previous information and metadata is valuable. So let's say that we will add two things for now that are codebook and questionnaire. Remember that, again, we will open the my local computer, and uh, you will select uh, these two files. Remember that the codebook should be um, in XML format, that is 
X, uh, Excel as X or doc X. Um, same for the questionnaire. Uh, if, uh, if you can add it in XML format, like doc X, that, that will be perfect. So then when you selected those files and maybe a readme files, text files, as I said, publications, whatever, you save and submit. Or if you don't want to submit, you just want to save, you press here, right? So when you go to data descriptions, the first one should be the last that you edited. Okay. All right. So that's all for now. And we will continue with the video series with more topics in data management.